Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for this introduction. So now uh, you are already aware that I'm going to talk about a bit of paleontology, which may sound a bit weird for astrobiological science, but I'm going to show you a bit of how we can use some new physical approaches to, to understand these structures that we call microfossils. So microfossils are very interesting for the proposals of astrobiology because they are morphological biosignatures of microorganisms that were preserved in the geological record. And they are the earliest direct evidence of life that we have on Earth. And uh, this, we don't have uh, nowadays uh, rocks from the Adian, but we do have well-preserved rocks from the Archean. And uh, studying these structures preserving these rocks give us also an insight into the paleoenvironmental context uh, bringing us a bit closer to, to the first uh, organisms and how this, these organisms were able to, to, to live in this ambient that was very different to what we know today. And it's also interesting because we'll have an insight of the early life, the diversity and evolution and uh, how life already was able to, to, to be uh, in the Archean. So, uh, Microfossils are really interesting, so we can, we know that in Mars, uh, in the past of Mars, we have habitable conditions, so we may have uh, traces of life there, so let's go look for them, and this is one of the aims of NASA and ESA for the next years. But if you want to look for life in Mars, we need also to, to, to think, so how we identify the structures? So how these structures that we know on Earth look like? And this, especially if we're talking this about this really First, microfossils. We have uh, actually not a quite answer because every year we have new studies coming and quite a, it's a, a quite big discussions of which are the earliest uh, evidence of life of microfossils on Earth. And uh, we have uh, every year new studies claiming that they found the earliest microfossils on Earth. And this is still a big discussion. And one of the reasons of this is that actually microfossils are quite challenging structures to study. First reason is because they are micrometric size structures, which means that for, for analyzing them, we require nanometric resolution. They are organisms that are now rocks, so they have an homogeneous density. And this is an important thing because most of imaging techniques are based in the absorption and absorption is directly related to the density of the materials. And uh, we cannot forget that these rocks pass to billions of years of geological processing, which means that first they are rare, we don't have that many places on Earth that we can find the really uh, Archean, well-preserved rocks. And one important thing is if we are going to talk about if these structures are really biogenic, how we prove that what we find in the geological record are really remains of life. And this is a very tricky question because we have a lot of structures that look like life, but they are actually uh, not abiotically formed. So we have some examples here, so some, uh, some uh, silica biomorphs, and we have a very famous example of this Alan Hills meteorite that they found the structures that look a lot of li like life bringing uh, this idea of how can we prove that what we find is really life. So the objective of my project is to try some uh, new high resolution imaging techniques, looking for uh, ultra structure of, this stru of, this, of, of what we find in the geological record, and looking for contributing about this biogenesis criteria to identify them. So uh, first technique that uh, you already introduced, uh, Scan, confocal scanning uh, laser, confocal laser scanning microscopy. We took some Brazilian microfossils from uh, 290 million years old. We put them uh, in this microscope because kerogen, that is the de degraded organic matter, they, it has a autofluorescence property, which means that we can image the, the, the organic matter and see them in 3D. And uh, we can have images of the, the preserved uh, kerogen in microfossils. Uh, we can do this for cyanobacteria. We also did this to some pollen grains, and pollens are much more resistant structures, uh, which, which was interesting because we saw that actually we had different fluorescence wavelengths. And this means that actually we have more than one type of organic matter here. And this indicates that we may have a different level of geochemical maturation of this organic matter. Or also, 
that we have different types of kerogen, indicating probably different biological compounds that, that evoluted differently during the geological processing. Uh, another thing we did, we took pieces of rocks, we, we decided to do a micro tomography, we took them to the micro tomography beam line of the Brazilian synchrotron, so these are the only pieces of rocks, we scanned them, and these are the pollen grains I just showed you, we could identify them inside these pieces of rocks because they have this Mickey Mouse uh, morphology quite easy to, under, to, to, to recognize. And uh, it was interesting because this approach is totally non-destructive. We just took a piece of rock, we put there, and we managed to identify the structures. But pollen grains, they are quite big if we are talking about microsoft. They, they have uh, more than 50 uh, nano micrometers, which is big for, old, for really my microorganisms. When we look for smaller structures, we can see some, some structures with this micro CT, but uh, they are not so easy to, to recognize and to understand if they are really fossils or not. Uh, and the reasons are the same I, I just said. They are, we are talking about absorption techniques, so they are homogeneous dense, and we are talking about the micro CT. We are not achieving nanometric resolution. So uh, just a, a basic idea uh, when we are talking about X-ray imaging. We have an object, and when we, we put them under the X-rays, they absorb X-rays, and the absorption of X-rays, as I said, is directly related to density. So this is the reason that if we put our hand in the X-rays, we will see the, the, the high-density compounds, but we are not really be able to distinguish the soft tissues, the, the flesh, and so on. And if we're talking about a fossil, we, I, we did this in previous work. We put a, a fossil fish in a, in a CT scan of a hospital, and we could see some structures, but not that many information. So this is why I'm talking about absorption CT. But it's the same CT that we do when we go to a hospital to do an exam. But absorption is not the only thing happening when you have the X-rays interacting with, with your object. A lot of different things happen. And uh, the object has actually an index of refraction that is complex in the index of refraction. So this part is, here is related to the absorption, as I said, but we also have this other part here that is actually related to another physical phenomenon that is refraction. Refraction is also going on here, so we may be able to explore this thing for seeing more information. So if you have two, two uh, X-ray waves coming, they are in phase, which means they have uh, the both highs and, and, and lows together. Uh, one will pass through your object, it will, will slow down when passing through the object, and when it exits exit the object, we, they will not be anymore in phase. We'll have this phase change now, and we can explore this to see it, it as a contrast for the imaging. In this, this type of approach is called phase contrast. So coming back again to our fish, we had this image with absorption CT, we took the same fish, we did phase contrast CT, and now we have this image, now we can see much more, more, more structures. We can see a lot of different things. And uh, if you look to the stomach of this fish, we can find uh, this kind of last meal. And uh, if you cannot identify what it is, I'll give you a clue. And uh, we did see this kind. This is to show you how much more sensitive these phase contours are for fossils. So this is really good for, for microfossils, right? So let's try to explore phase contrast in microfossils. So we did this, and this technique uh, we applied is called tychography. We joined tychography with tomography, so we did a, a phase contrast nanotomography using tychography. We put some microfossils uh, from Precambrian, so we have this iron oxide preserved uh, filaments of microbes. We took them to the synchrotron source. Uh, we used the six axis beam line of the Swiss light source, and uh, we'll show you what we get with this technique. So. First thing that is very good, we achieved a 52 nanometer resolution, which is great, much higher than we, we could get with any other uh, X-ray imaging so far. We also have now the pixel intensity that is related to electron density because it's the electron density of the, the compounds that gives the, the phase changes. So we can extract uh, the electron density, which gives us the density. So we have also uh, information about what are these materials inside the, the fossils. So we could identify clearly four different uh, compounds in these microfossils. We have here the silica matrix. 
We have uh, these wi more white structures that are more dense. They are the iron oxides uh, that uh, we already could see in red in the optical microscope. And we have now the silica mixture with the organic matter. And we have also some really, really low density structures that may, have, may be the degraded uh, components, uh, the degraded cell membranes and septa that we had in the filament. So just a little video to show you how it looks. So we have here the, the pillar of rock. We have the filament inside, passing through it. So we can see the, the low density structures that I will mark here in blue. We can see the body of the, of the fossil that I'll mark here in green. And the iron oxide in orange. And now we can have a 3D imaging knowing uh, not only the morphological, but also the, the chemical information of this fossil. So we had before this image using um, a visible light microscope. And now we have this image, much more information. It's the same structures. And now we can see some features that we couldn't see before. Uh, and we can identify the compounds, which can also help us to understand the fossilization processes. Uh, so conclusions. Uh, using these different physical phenomena uh, are allowing, uh, is allowing us to, to retrieve novel chemical and morphological information of microfossils. Uh, the electron density contrast that we can achieve with tychography associated with the nanometric resolution that we can also have with technique is able to give us some new insights into the morphologi morphological aspects. And now we are able to re start revisiting the biogenistic criteria that were defined with the lower uh, resolution imaging. Uh, another very important thing is that we are talking about techniques that have little or no sample loss, which is very important. If we think now about bringing samples from Mars, and we are proposing new approaches now for studying the, the samples that uh, we will bring in the near future from Mars. So that's what we're doing. Thank you very much. I'll leave you with a little video of the new synchrotron that we are building in Brazil. So we'll be open for your users soon. So I hope uh, some of you can go and use and synchrotrons are open for the community. So hope to see some of you soon. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Do we have any questions? I thought your talk was incredible. It was great. Okay. Uh, so, uh, a question regarding the uh, fossilization process: Have you maybe moved a step further to build some models for diagenesis? We didn't, but uh, it's a possibility. Uh, we do have some studies that do in situ fossilization, and one interesting thing would be really uh, simulating this, and you can measure in different times and seeing what happened because. Actually, the preservation of these microorganisms are, is, is known to be quite fast uh, doing silica permineralization. So we still didn't, but it's, it's, it's true that it's possible. So it's an interesting idea maybe for the future. Any further questions? Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you had a fossil in Mars or something like that, how would you, I guess you would not have this technology in a different planet? Even no, no. That no, this is a limitation of synchrotron techniques because we cannot have portable synchrotrons. Yeah. So it's true. Uh, we can, uh, we have other techniques aiming to find uh, this uh, the, these biosignatures outside, but they are limited compared to this one. So we can have a uh, some clues, but uh, to have a really deep study, we will really need to bring samples. So this is the biggest limitation for, for looking for life. We, we need to bring them. Any further questions? Okay, thank you so much, thank Laura. You.